I have been waiting to do one of these since I started my channel. I can't believe it, you guys. I'm pregnant. This is my week four update. By the time you guys see this, I will be technically five weeks pregnant, but I'm going to try to do one of these every two weeks. I just feel like every week would be like not enough to talk about, but if there's a particular week that's just a ton happened, then I'll do an extra one that week or something. But I feel like um, if every two weeks would be a good goal. So this is week four update. I'm still just, I still can't believe I'm pregnant. Like you guys have seen pretty much our, our entire journey. Um, I think I started my channel when we were ending month three of us trying. Um, we ended up actively trying for seven months before my big fat positive. And we went home this past weekend and told all of our family so if you haven't seen those videos, go check them out right now. Grab the tissues because they are tear jerkers. Me finding out I was pregnant was super, super emotional and probably the best day of my life this far. So go check those out if you haven't already. And let's get started with my week four update. So I'm going to talk a little bit about our TTC for the month, kind of like I do in past TTC videos and what ended up working for us. I did still use a few ovulation tests this cycle. I had some left over from a couple of cycles ago, so I did use those. As always, I'll insert a screenshot. I did have my positive LH surge on cycle day 13 and 14. So I believe we conceived on the 4th of July, which is America, AF, how cool is that? Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure that that was the day. So I had those and I had a little bit of pre-seed left over, just a tiny bit. I think we used it one time and then I didn't have any left. So I used that up. I also used my evening primrose oil tablets, which I have right here. So I used these again this cycle. Um, I use them from cycle day one to cycle day 14 because you don't want to use them after you ovulate because they can cause uterine contractions. So if you do get pregnant, not safe to use them after cycle day 14 or whenever you ovulate. So I took the maximum amount this past month. I took 3000 um, milligrams a day. So that's three capsules. I took two in the morning and one in the evening. So I upped that from previous months. Something we did different this month, or I did different, I talked about this in my last TTC video. I started using Pink Stork Fertility Boost tablets. And I really think this is one of the things that did it, you guys, because this was the only month I used these and I got pregnant, the first month of using them. So like I said in my last TTC video, if you haven't checked out Pink Stork on Instagram, check out her products. They're all organic. Her story is amazing. I have more Pink Stork goodies down here that I'm going to show you in just a little bit. After Pink Stork heard that we conceived after one month of trying these, they are actually sending me like a bunch of goodies in the mail, which is so sweet and not necessary, but I'm so grateful for that. So when that package comes, I'll definitely show you guys what they sent me. But I took one of these in the morning and one in the afternoon, and they're basically a prenatal vitamin with extra herbs in there that are um, proven to enhance female fertility. So obviously they worked. Check out this product if you guys are TTC. It definitely worked for us. Another thing that we used this past month for the first time, it was our first and only month using it, was a menstrual cup. And I talked about this in my last um, TTC video as well. I used the Blossom menstrual cup. This is the one that I used. And it did exactly what I wanted it to do. Obviously, after one month of using it, I got pregnant. So I really feel that these two products did the trick. Um, if you didn't watch my last TTC video, I wanted to use the menstrual cup um, to help keep all of that stuff up inside me. And it did that. I would, you know, we would do the deed afterwards. I would insert my menstrual cup, lay there for about 30 minutes with pillows underneath me. And then I would get up, go to the bathroom, do what I need to do. I would make sure that it was suctioning properly. Sorry if that's gross. 
whatever. <laughs> um, and then I would go to bed and I would leave it in all night and obviously it worked. So thumbs up to the menstrual cup method. <laughs> so I did use my Ava bracelet again the month that we conceived and I am continuing to wear it since I found out I am pregnant, which I will talk about in just a few minutes. But let me tell you guys, this thing is ridiculously accurate with my body now. Um, it originally said at the beginning of my cycle last month that I would ovulate on cycle day 16. As we got a little closer, that moved up a day and it said I would ovulate on cycle day 15. And then the morning of cycle day 14, when I woke up and I connected it to my phone, it said, you're going to ovulate today. So that was accurate. According to my ovulation test that I used, I had the LH surge on cycle day 13, like I said, which would mean that I would ovulate cycle day 14. So by month four of wearing Ava, it became super accurate with my body. I will say that around cycle day 20, I started losing some hope that I was pregnant because my skin temperature, according to Ava, dipped just a little bit, like maybe a tenth of a percent, like just a tiny, tiny bit. But I don't know. I saw that dip and I heard that your skin temperature is supposed to stay elevated when you get pregnant. So I was like, well, not pregnant, but don't get discouraged if you see that, guys, because obviously I'm pregnant and it did dip a little bit. It's still elevated compared to how it was um, pre-ovulation, but it does go up and down a tiny bit, which is fine, obviously. So around cycle day 20, I got my check mark on cycle day 14, basically saying that, yes, I did ovulate back on cycle day 14. Um, Ava said it predicted a biphasic signal pattern, which I kind of talked about in previous TTC videos. And it's basically saying like, yep, you for sure ovulated. Here's your check mark. We were right. So I am, like I said, going to continue to wear this um, throughout my pregnancy, at least for now, because it does still track all of those good things. I can never remember all of them. Skin temperature, breathing rate, uh, pulse, resting pulse rate, HRV, sleep duration, five. I think that's all. And um, now that I'm pregnant, it has me enter my weight every day. You don't have to do that every day. If you skip a day, it just assumes you're at the same weight. So I've been doing that and it also tells me week by week what my body might be doing, what my baby's doing, how it's growing. And I think that's super cool to read that at the beginning of every week. I actually printed out um, week four. So I'm going to go ahead and read that to you guys, uh, what Ava is saying the baby is doing. So week four, your baby is the size of a chai seed and weighs one gram. The blastocyst buried deep into the wall of your uterus, continues to divide rapidly, splitting into two groups. One becomes the embryo and the other becomes the placenta. The placenta releases the hormone HGC level, which not only keeps you from releasing additional eggs, but also stimulates the ovaries to produce estrogen and progesterone, hormones critical for a healthy pregnancy. The placenta will soon become your baby's source of nourishment and waste, and waste removal as it channels nutrients and oxygen from your body to your baby and your baby's waste products onto you. The yolk sac and amniotic sac are also beginning to develop. The fluid-filled amniotic sac will cushion and protect your baby. The yolk sac will provide nourishment until the placenta is ready for prime time. Even more amazing, your baby's hair color, eye color, gender, and unique family traits like dimples or a widow's peak are already determined by her chromosomes although it will be quite a while before they take shape. So that's what baby is up to right now, still in the very, very early stages developing, but I think it's super cool that all those things are already determined. So that's very interesting. And then about my body, it says week four is the time when you might start to feel pregnant. You might experience some nausea, breast tenderness, or sensitivity to smells. These signs may tip you off to being pregnant before you even take a test. You may also notice some interesting trends in your AVA data. A continuously high pulse rate and skin temperature indicate pregnancy. So that was my AVA update. Like I said, I'm gonna to continue to wear it throughout my pregnancy. As of now, if that changes, I will definitely let you guys know. 
And now I want to talk about some symptoms I've been having because I've definitely been having some. And to me, it's just so exciting. Like, I don't even care if I don't feel good. I'm not going to complain at all because this is what I've wanted for so long. So the first um, symptom I noticed, and this wasn't, this isn't a pregnancy symptom, but it's the first thing I noticed this month that I had never experienced before. And that was on cycle day 14. So the day I was supposed to ovulate. I had some pretty uncomfortable cramps and I have never had ovulation cramps before. And these were, these were noticeable. They weren't like super painful. They were just uncomfortable, kind of a burning, um, just felt different from period cramps. And it lasted for about maybe two hours on and off. I remember I was sitting at work at my desk and I just kept kind of like repositioning and it was just uncomfortable. And all I can think is we probably conceived the night before um, when I was most fertile and that was my body starting to do its thing. That's all I can think of, um, of why I would have cramped this month around ovulation and it never happened before. So that's interesting. Um, another symptom that I had was starting around cycle day 26 and 27, I had really bad gas pains and indigestion. And I just chalked it up to something I ate because that's not like super abnormal. Like people get that all the time, but that was a thing. And then I noticed um, that my boobs started to hurt so bad. I know that the cycle day 27, I had to take my bra off at like five o'clock in the evening and just get in my pajamas because my boobs were so sore. And that's not something I typically experience um, pre-period. Every now and then, maybe a little bit, but this was like intense soreness. So in my mind, I'm like, dude, this is a pregnancy symptom, but I didn't want to get my hopes up. So I kept talking myself out of it. I kept saying to myself like, no, no, don't get excited. Like it's probably just PMS. So ended up not being though for once. <laughs> and then the day of my pregnancy test, I had some nausea. Um, I had a headache that day which now that I think of it, I haven't had a headache since. And I get headaches pretty often. And I had a pretty bad headache that day. Um, but I don't think I've had a headache since, which is not normal for me because I get headaches all the time. So that's cool. And frequent urination. From the day I found out that I was pregnant, frequent urination is definitely apparent. My husband's already annoyed with me because we'll be driving somewhere. And I'm like, can we stop and use a bathroom? Like, can we stop at the gas station? And it's a different kind of urge. Like when I got to go now, I got to go pull over, find a store. Sorry. And I feel like I have a constant pit in my stomach. I've been going back and forth from nauseous to hungry and I just never feel satisfied. Um, my nausea hasn't been bad the last couple of days, but for a few days there, it was pretty intense in the morning. I haven't thrown up. Um, I know that the day I announced it to most of my family was my niece's birthday party and my brother-in-law grilled like burgers and hot dogs and we, they had some sides like mac and cheese and stuff. And I was making my plate and no one knew yet, besides like my mom and my grandma, nobody else knew that I was pregnant and I was making my plate and I was literally like had a lump in my throat because everything just sounded gross to me. I didn't even get a burger or a hot dog, which is crazy because I love burgers, but I, I couldn't eat it. So I just like forced down some mac and cheese and some fruit salad. And um, so there was that, but cereal does not sound good to me, which is insane. If you know me, you know, I'm obsessed with cereal. I could eat cereal any time of the day. And as soon as I wake up every single morning, I always want cereal before I do anything else, before I get ready in the day, I want a big bowl of cereal. And that just does not sound good to me. Um, I've been eating about 30 minutes or so after I wake up. I usually will have oatmeal or a banana or just some fruit, maybe some yogurt, but cereal does not sound good to me, at least not first thing in the morning. Um, I was feeling very bloated. It's not too bad today, but it was weird. It was like I couldn't suck in my stomach. You know, when you try to make your stomach look flat and you can suck it in and make it look flat, I just felt so bloated. I feel like I couldn't suck it in. So there was that. I'm also not craving like 
chocolate or sweets, which again is crazy. So not me. I am a chocolate freak. Um, I've been craving fruit, which is great. I mean, that's much healthier than junk food. So I'm not complaining a bit. I've been eating a ton of like bananas and blueberries, um, like oranges, pineapple, all kinds of fruit. So that's been something I've been reaching for other than sweets. I haven't had any weight gain yet, which I didn't expect to. Um, my starting weight, just so you guys know, it varies day to day. It's about 124, um, like 124 to 126. And sometimes later on in the day, I'm like 127, 128, depending on how much I ate. But my weight has always fluctuated like three to four pounds throughout the day. That's just how I've always been. So I'm just saying my starting weight is like 124, 125, and it's been consistently there. So no weight gain yet. Um, these are the prenatals I am taking. Right now they're from Pink Stork. So I am taking the prenatal and the DHA. And the DHA I just take one tablet a day. The prenatal I take three a day, and I've been splitting that up. You can take all three at once or you can split them up. I've been taking two in the morning and one in the evening with dinner, and I really like them. They actually, they smell good to me. They remind me of tea. It's like, it smells very herbal, and I will say these make me burp a little bit, so I'm hoping that further along as the weeks go by and maybe my nausea, nausea gets worse, I'm hoping that doesn't bother me, but they do make me burp a little bit. Um, other than that, I'm feeling great, guys. Um, Sore boobs, a little bit of nausea, bloating, all the normal stuff. I am just so friggin' blessed and so happy and excited. And like I said, if you haven't checked out the video where I found out, go do it. It's amazing. It is my favorite video of all time. The feedback I have gotten from that video is incredible. My subscribers have like doubled since that video, which is amazing. So if you're new to my channel, welcome. Um, I'm so glad you guys are here and going to see my pregnancy journey with me. I'm going to end today with a belly shot, even though I don't have one at all, obviously. I'm going to do one every update just to kind of show you guys how my belly is progressing. I'm also going to be doing belly shots every two weeks on my Instagram. So if you don't follow me on Instagram, go do that right now so you don't miss out on any pregnancy updates. So this shirt is super loose, you can't really even tell. And I, I've always had a little bit of a pooch, so don't judge me. But literally, nothing, there's nothing there. Not even a little bit. This is just my belt. But that's okay, he or she will be sticking out soon enough. Nada. Okay guys, hope you enjoyed today's video. Please give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you're new, and I will catch you guys next week. Bye.